Hi guys, Emily with Rustic Passion Studio, and today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little flower pot tumbler. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. First I use the um, silicone mats from Amazon, the DOS air dry clay, and then I like this little rolling pin. I think I got it off Amazon, but it comes with these little discs on the end. Um, and you can remove them for whatever size thickness you want to roll to so that it stays even. Here I use the quarter inch on both sides. Um, there's one larger one, so I removed that before getting started. Then these are the two tumblers I'm going to use. One, They are both 12 ounces. The first one is the Little Buddy tumbler from Hog, the Stainless Depot. And then the second one was the 12 ounce I got from Maker Flow Crafts. And then I've just got my, I used some bakery items, so I just have a little scraper tool I use to cut my clay. First, we're gonna open the package of your air dry clay um, and just pull out a small um, ball. I'm gonna do two at the same time, so um, a piece for each of them. Don't really have an exact size measurement. I just kind of went off. Next, we're gonna take those couple of balls we've got of clay and just knead them up really good. You just wanna kind of work it around and play with it for a couple of minutes um, to get the molecules warmed up and sticking together really well. Off to the side, I have a little cup of water. You'll see I dip my fingers in it now and then um, just to keep the clay moisturized and keep it from drying out or cracking at all. You do not want to get it overly wet but just have enough to um, stay workable for you. And then once I have those into worked in for a couple of minutes I split them into two pieces one for each cup and then I'm just going to roll them into a ball and then into a little log here and then we're just going to work it out like a snake so just Kind of try to start in the middle and roll it out towards the sides. So these rolls are going to be the top rims of our little flower pots on the cup. And I'm just measuring them to get them around 11 to 12 inches long. Um, a little bit longer than what the circumference of the top of the cup would be. That way there's a little bit of overlap I can cut off and get them to fit well. Once I have both of my pieces rolled out, I'm going to move one out of the way and then I'm going to use the rolling pin, um, again set to that quarter inch depth, to flatten out our little snake. Um, you really want to make sure your roll is nice and even or else, kind of like you'll see on the end of mine, you'll get some little indents where it's not the same th thickness throughout. You can kind of use your fingers. Um, to pinch that back together and get it into a nice uniform piece for you. Once you have everything rolled out, you can use a straight edge or like a vinyl scraper uh, or anything and kind of just use it to make that top edge of where your rim is going to go um, really straight. So when you get it on the cup, it'll be nice nice and smooth. I'm dipping my fingers in a little bit of water here to help blend the clay together a little bit more. And then next we are going to go ahead and wrap that around our cup. So I forgot I was doing two of them. So actually I set that first piece off to the side while I went ahead and rolled out the second piece for my second flower pot tumbler. Once I got those both rolled out, then I went ahead and applied them to the top rim of the cup. So while doing this, I kind of used a little bit of firm pressure to make sure it adhered to the cup. Um, and I leave a little bit of a gap, about a fourth of an inch, from the top of the tumbler so that the epoxy has somewhere to adhere to when we get to that point. I use my straight edge to push down just between that little overlap 
to remove the end pieces and then just kind of smooth and blend that clay together at that connection point. Again, use a little bit of water to help blend that in and then you want to get that all smoothed out so it's not going to crack or fall off on you later on. And then next I go around the entire cup and I just use a little bit of pressure to blend that bottom edge down onto the tumbler. Um, also I try to keep it sh a little bit smooth um, and uniform as I go. So you just want to kind of play around with this. Um, I had a little bit, um, the clay loosened up a little bit, so I cut another small piece out to get that a little bit tighter and make sure it adhered to the cup really well. I also like to use that straight edge along the top rim of the cup um, to help get a nice clean edge. And then I'll just go around and kind of continue to blend and smooth out the cup and just kind of work it in. So I really just worked with this for a good five to ten minutes at least per cup. Um, I'm not a clay artist at all, so definitely have some things I could improve upon. And don't worry about getting it 100% smooth. We'll work on that with the epoxy layer. But you would just want to not have any huge dimples. And then make sure you leave that little rim at the top edge right there for the epoxy to go. So after the clay is on there, I let it dry for two days. I think it says 24 to 48 hours. Um, just make sure it's good and dry before you move on to this next step. Um, sorry, I'm a little off screen here, but after I waited a couple days, I just went ahead and lightly sanded that clay. I just got out any more little bumps or imperfections that there might be. Again, not worrying about it being 100% perfect, but I blended in the bottom edge of the clay where it meets the cup um, just to kind of smooth that down a little bit. And then I did the same thing along the top rim. Um, don't get this wet at all, just a soft dry sand. I have a 220 grit sandpaper, although it's an old one that's a lot smoother so that it wouldn't eat away too much of the clay and remove more than I wanted it to. Once I was happy with the sanding on both of those, I went ahead and put a little bit of alcohol on some on a paper towel and just cleaned the cup up. I did wipe over the clay just real lightly, not saturating it at all, um, just to clean off all that excess powder and debris from the sanding. I did both the inside and the outside of the cup. After we finished sanding and cleaning our cups, I went ahead and took them outside and just did a thin layer of white spray paint over the entire cup, um, both the stainless steel and the clay. I don't know if this is a necessity, but I like having a nice smooth um, finish over the entire piece before putting epoxy on. After we have a nice spray painted base, we went ahead and moved on to our first coat of epoxy. I'm doing two cups at once and I mixed about 30 milliliters um, and I applied about 12 to 15 milliliters per each one of these. I went ahead and just used a fast set since this is going to be going underneath of another layer of spray paint. Um, it won't matter if it yellows at all or has any little micro bubbles in it. So go ahead and just get a good coat on those. Make sure you get on that top rim so that you're adhering to the stainless steel above your clay piece. 
um, to get a good seal and then just get everything coated a nice good coat after that I take my torch and go ahead and pop any bubbles and um, make sure that you don't have any fish eyes that appear later once your epoxy is dried um, with that fast set, it's only about two to four hours, I went ahead and did a nice wet sanding. Um, don't overly saturate your cup as you may hit through to some of that clay, but you just want to remove any bumps or imperfections that you may have had in that first coat of epoxy. So just give them both a nice sanding. Um, I like to do the rim and expose a little bit of stainless steel as well around the top for the next layer of epoxy to adhere to. After um, a good sanding on both cups, I just went ahead and dried them off and got them ready to do the next spray paint. For this next step, we spray paint them that terracotta color. And for that, I use the Rust-Oleum 2X color in cinnamon with a satin finish. I went ahead and did two to three coats. Um, you wanna do them real light short bursts so that you don't get any drips since there's no glitter or anything else being applied to this tumbler you want to make sure you get a nice smooth finish with that spray paint also make sure you get that bottom rim and then also on the top rim down in there um, you might get some overspray inside the cup but don't worry about that we can always go back and remove that when we are completed with some acetone after you've got a good two to three coats of spray paint on your tumblers, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. Make sure they are fully dried first. Um, here I'm just applying a, the second coat of epoxy and I am using the KS Lickety Split Fast Set for these. It does like a warm environment, so usually my room is around 80 degrees. This set I used about 10 to 15 milliliters of epoxy and made sure to really fully cover all of the edges. So that very top rim next to the stainless steel and then under that clay piece as well as the bottom. And then once I was done getting those both coated pretty well, I went ahead and used my torch to remove any bubbles that had appeared. Here you wanna really be careful to make sure you get all of those micro bubbles as you will notice them. While the cups were drying, I went ahead and went on to create the decals. For these, I used two different ones, one Crazy Plant Lady and one Grow Positive Thoughts. Both these are SVGs that I created and will be available in our Etsy shop that I will have linked down below. So I wanted to apply a warp to the Grow Positive Thoughts as this cup was a little bit more tapered and this decal was a little larger. So here I'm just going ahead and getting the measurements with our calipers for the bottom diameter of the cup as well as the top of where that decal would go. And I use the Silhouette software, so in there I go to the conical warp option and you can enter all of those dimensions. The calipers make it really easy to find these measurements and to be pretty exact on them. Once I have those measurements to where they should be, then I just adjust the image to where I'd want it to be on the cup. So here, I just need to slide it up a little bit higher, and that would be that bottom box selection in the Silhouette Studio. And then I can hit Apply, and that will be have a slight curve to it now. So when I apply it to the tumbler, it will be, the words will be straight. Next, I'm just going to align the decals where I want them to print on my mat before I go ahead and send those through. Everyone uses different settings on their silhouette. On mine, I used a depth of 2 with a force of 15 and a speed of 8. Once we are finished printing, we are ready to go ahead and add, move on to the decal phase. So first I like to clean off the top rim of the tumblers with my X-Acto knife. Um, just be careful you're not sliding it down the cup, but just removing any 
excess epoxy that maybe went over the edge as you were applying it. After that is all cleaned off, I forgot to show it, but I did sand around the rims um, just a little bit to again expose a small sliver of stainless steel around the top so that our final coat of epoxy has something to adhere to. So next I'm going to cut apart those decals from each other so it makes weeding them a little bit easier. One step I didn't show on the silhouette was the little circles for the holes that I created for the bottoms of the cups. I use a dark brown at about a 0.68 diameter circle and then a black at about half an inch to go on top of that that I put on the bottoms of the tumblers to look like the little drainage hole in the bottom of a flower pot. And then I weeded out both of my decals after that. Mama. Sorry about the cats getting in the way. <laughs> this one has a lot of little details, so I'm just getting in there to make sure I have it all. The transfer tape I'm using here is just a 4 inch by like a 100 foot roll that I got off of Amazon. It's really easy to use multiple times. And to line up my words, I just set the cup down on a flat surface and pretty much just eyeball it to make sure that it looks straight. After I got the crazy plant lady one on, then I went ahead and did that circle for the bottom of the cup. Again, not doing anything too precise. I just feel for the little indent in the very bottom and then get that right in the middle of the tumbler. I went ahead and just did that for both of those. The next decal I'm going to do is that grow positive thoughts with a couple of the little plants on top of it. Again, just kind of eyeballing it. And then you really want to make sure you get that burnished down and adhere to the cup really well so that nothing lifts up or pulls off and the epoxy doesn't get underneath of it. I left the insides of the plants and the words on when I applied the decal and then I just go back through and pull them off after they're on the cup. I find that a lot easier than trying to do it on the paper. And then once you get all those weeded out, all you have to do is put your final coat of epoxy on. I did not record that for this video, but just, I would probably just do another 10 to 15 milliliters and that would finish off the cup.